Today in the news, Intel beats AMD and Nvidia at something, cheaper motherboards are finally coming for Ryzen 7000, and Corsair shifts their power. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. So for the last couple of years, and I think this dates back to like 2020, Microsoft has been teasing some sort of direct storage API. At first it was teased with the um, Xbox Series X and its velocity architecture, but in that same year, Xbox said that it would also come to PC gaming. Neat, so where is it? Well, we're kind of still waiting for it. No games support the feature just yet, except for one, which is supposed to come out next week. Currently though, there are some demos and uh, benchmarks of the actual feature out in the wild, and it looks like you'll get different results based on if you go AMD, Nvidia, or Intel for your GPU. PCGamesHardware.de went ahead and tested one top tier GPU from each brand and a high end CPU to see what kind of speeds we can actually expect. First, the CPU decompression. They used a 12900K, sure, it's last gen, and at most it was able to reach speeds of about 5.2 gigabytes per second in decompression slash transfer. All of the GPUs, on the other hand, almost tripled that rate with on average around 15 gigabytes per second when using PCIe Gen 4 SSDs. The uh, surprising thing here is that the puny little ARC A770 here is actually faster than both the RTX 4080 and AMD RX 7900 XT. Now, sure, it's a very specific workload, but I mean, kudos to Intel. I'd really like to make an actual deep dive on direct storage, simply because, well, I see a lot of misinformation online from pretty big YouTubers, and the future of the technology is actually very promising, kind of insane. Let me know down below if you'd like to see something like that. Moving on, it looks like AMD's promise might finally come true. Back when they announced the Ryzen 7000 series of CPUs, they also talked about their motherboard platform. Specifically, they mentioned that the motherboards would start at a reasonable 125 US dollars. Since then though, well, you can see by yourself, the minimum price right now for an AM5 board is about 160 bucks, about 30% more expensive than promised. The working theory was simply that we'll have to wait for an A620 board. Well, it's been months and we're finally seeing some proof of their existence. Gigabyte just did an EEC filing and listed five different A620 models, and ASUS has a listing for a uh, tough gaming A620M board. With the introduction of the non-X series of Ryzen 7000 CPUs and their insanely efficient 65 watt TDP, power consumption I believe is 88 watts maximum, something like that. Well, thanks to their light power requirement, an A620 board might just be what you need to at least get into the game with Zen 4. I just hope they don't cut it down too much. PCIe Gen 5 might turn out to be something really cool in the future. Then remember last year when Gigabyte released something that was pretty cool. Project Stealth, I think it was called, and basically the PC had all of its connectors uh, completely hidden from view. It was because all the connectors were in the back. It was definitely a cool idea for a clean PC build, but it was exclusive to their DIY bare bones kit, which limits your choices a lot. They only made an RTX 3070 with the stealth power connector. They only uh, have an Intel Z690 version and it's already relatively outdated. And of course, you only had the choice of a gigabyte case. So your stealth PC will look like every single other stealth PC. And in my opinion, the look is kind of dated. In comes ASUS who created the DIY APE standard. That way, everyone can make a stealth PC with relatively good PC case compatibility. Other motherboard manufacturers like MSI and Maxon jumped into the standard with their own DIY APE motherboards, as you can see here. And case manufacturers like Lee and Lee, Cooler Master, Cougar, Sama, Fantex, and Johnsbo are all stated to be working on uh, compatible cases. And now we got another company moving in to try and change the standards in PCB. 
building, and that's Corsair. This information comes from Momomo US over on Twitter, and basically we have a leaked design of an upcoming shift series of power supplies. You can maybe guess by the name, but basically the power supply shifts the uh, power connectors from the back of the uh, actual PSU all the way to the side. I mean, in a traditional PC case, this makes zero sense unless you have, I don't know, a pretty big cable management area in the back, or maybe it would make sense on future slim cases, like where you rotate the PSU 90 degrees. Personally, I don't really see a big purpose here. What do you guys think about that? Let me know down below. Anyways, guys, that's pretty much it for the catch up. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you want to talk about today's stories. As usual, it's right here. Let's see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.